Hello viewers, welcome back. In this session, we are going to discuss about intent and intent filters. What is an intent? How to communicate between the application components using the intents? What is the primary info of an intent object? And what are they? How does it work? And what are the different types of intents are available in the Android? Now let us see what is an intent. An intent is a messaging object which contains a description of an action to be performed so that it can be handled by the application components. So here the application components are activated through the intents where it is a messaging facility to bind the components of the same application or of a different applications. So there are separate mechanisms for delivering the intents to the each application component in the Android. Now let us see how to communicate to activity services and broadcast receivers. We do not communicate to the content providers because content providers are meant for to provide the content of one application to the other applications. So here when you want to start an activity or maybe to send an intent to an activity we will use start activity method so that this start activity method is going to launch a new activity of the same application or maybe the different application. And then start activity for result. If that particular activity is returning a result, so then we are going to handle that in a on activity result method of that particular activity. So here the best example is when you use a camera let us suppose in your whatsapp when you click on a camera icon it is starting an activity that is cameras capture image activity or capture video activity and where that particular activity is returning a result what it is either a picture or maybe a video is the result so in that case you are going to use if that particular activity whatever you are calling is returning any result we will use start activity for result method we will handle the result in the on activity result callback method. The same way, if you want to start a service using intents, then we will use start service method. This method will start to perform one time operations of the same application service. And bind service method is to bind the service in a client server interface. The best example is until unless you are connected to WhatsApp or Gmail or Facebook server, then only you will receive the data. Means you are bound to that particular age. Google server, YouTube server, Facebook server, WhatsApp server. So when you are unbind, then you don't receive any updates. Next, how to deliver broadcast? We can deliver broadcast to the other applications by using an intent to send broadcast, send ordered broadcast, send the sticky broadcast methods. So why this is so strong in the Android? The intent mechanism is so robust in Android. Why? Because of no overlap here. What is mean by that? When you want to send an intent to an activity, then it leads only to the activity. When you want to send it to a service, it leads only to the service, neither to the activity nor to the broadcast receiver. When you want to send it, a broadcast that it will receive only to the broadcast neither to the service nor to the activity so as there is no overlap here in sending or communicating with the intents in application components so that is why it is most preferred one the preferred met methodology here in the android so what is mean by this every time we are calling intent intent messaging object more messaging object and all what it is it has some information. Now let us see what information an intent object contains. The primary information of an intent object contains name, action, data, category, extras, and flags. Now let us see one by one in detail. The first one is name. What is a name? The name of the component to start. Same. It's like what is mean by name for us? Just to call us. The same way then which is unique basically in the Android part. When you are working of the same application, then you must have an identical name or the unique name. 
So here the compound name name is an optional in the Android. Why means when you set a name, it's going to be an explicit intent. If you do not provide the name, Android system finds the best component to start it. That is nothing but your explicit intent. So here the name is a critical piece of information which makes an intent to an explicit, either explicit or implicit. Without a component name, the intent is implicit and the system decides which component should receive the intent. The component name object can be specified using the class name of the target component, including the package inside this particular Android manifest.xml file. So here some example is com.ekida.target activity. The means when the user click on something, it is going to be your tar target activity. So that is how we are going to do by name. Next action. So a string that specifies the general generic action to be performed. Simple in general times we'll say to either angers or maybe the kids, sit down there, watch TV, bring an object, or bring a what glass of water, something like that. Means where you are telling what action to be performed. Okay. So here a string action is a string specifies general generic action to be performed. We can specify the action for an intent with set action method or maybe intent constructor. When you are working with the explicit intents, mostly we prefer with intent constructor. We will see that in our future sessions. Now, the default action calls which are predefined in our Android is like this. For different applications, we have different actions. First one is like when you want to make phone application, where what do you do with that? You'll make calls. You'll receive calls, so like that. And here we have two things. One is action call and action dial. Two belongs to the phone application, which is the target component is an activity. Action call is going to start a new activity with the provide given number. Means it will directly place a call. When it is action dial, so it is going to open the phone number in a dialer pad. The user has to click on that. That we will see in detail in the next future sessions in the best with the best example next action edit which is also an activity because you are entering here you are interacting with application activity so where it is going to display the data for the user to edit action main startup as an essential activity of the task with no data input and no return output action sync where you will see in your mobile's defaultly syncing of the data with google or the respective one Action battery low, which is related to the broadcast receivers, means broadcasting announcements. So here the target component is broadcast receiver, a warning light that battery is low, action headset plug, stating that okay, new headset or a headset has been plugged in, or if it has remote means plugged out. You'll see here. Action screen on, the screen has been turned on. Action time zone change. If you observe here for every action in Android, action underscore is the prefix for that particular action. If it is a call action, action underscore is the prefix. If it is an action sync, action underscore sync. So action underscore is the prefix for all your actions. The next to target when intent object is data. What is mean by data in general? So whatever you collect or maybe whatever has been provided to you by the user or maybe by the, by the client. So here, nothing but how we display in Android. Now let us see. So the URI of the data to be acted on and the MIME type of that particular data. So next example, how you can justify this statement. If the action field is action edit, the data field would be contain the URI of the document to be displayed for editing. The so where mean which file you want to edit. If it is an action edit, mean whether what do you want to edit? Contact, you want to edit a file or what do you want to edit? Or a message something like this so here the content colon is the prefix if the action is action call the data field would be tell colon so what it will be telephone number is required to make a call or maybe to dial a call dial the number so what does it input telephone number tell colon is the uri here so next when you want to set the data we'll use set data method when you want to use the type we'll use set type methods and when you want to set both, we'll use set data and type. Android 5.0 and above versions onwards directly, we are using set data and type. 
text, the category. So it is a string containing an additional information about the kind of the component that should handle the intent. So it's going to be defined what kind of a category it belongs to. Next, any number of categories descriptions can be placed in intent. There is no limit, but we will use very little categories here. Category browsable, where the target activity can be safely invoked by the browser to display the data referred by a link. For example, an image link or an email message. Next, category gadget, category home. When you click, click on a home button, this particular thing will call, or when you click on a D pad at the bottom center. Category launcher. When you have multiple number of activities are there in your application. So if you set a category for a particular application as category launcher, that particular activity is going to load first in your app application. Category preferences, where you can target an activity is a preference panel in the preference panel. Extras. Extras is nothing but a key value pairs of information which is required to accomplish the requested action. The intent object has a series of put methods and the get methods when you want to insert the data. So we'll see uh, there is a put string, put int, put boolean like that. And when you want to get just you'll see get int, get boolean, get string, something like that. We'll see in uh, future examples, no problem about all these, how to set the data, get the data. Next, same as bundle, extras ha can be inserted into an intent object. So using the put extras method and read it can be used the get extras method. So what can be it? So as we regularly use Gmail, right? Where you'll see the subject, title, the text to be entered, and what exactly it is all about. So here for extras, just like for actions, action underscore is the prefix. The same way for extras, extras underscore is the prefix. We can create our own extra also by provi providing a constant, nothing but in all uppercase. Extra underscore is the prefix for that and you can create of your own choice. Here I'm taking that as something like this, a gigawatts. That is my extra content. The flags. Flags are various sorts in Android. Many flags instruct the Android system how to launch the app component. Example, which task the activity should belongs to. So accordingly, so it will load and how to treat it after it has been launched, whether it belongs to the list of recent activities or not, what it is. Flag activity clear task means in your mobile, when you click on the recent apps and you'll find an option called clear all. At that point of time, it's going to trick clear task. And when you want to start a new application, you just, at the moment when immediate after you click on a particular option, then immediately it tricks flag activity new task. Then when you want to clear the top, whatever it is, just simply clear top. The flag receiver registered only. So this is related to your broadcast receivers. So these flags are various sorts and it can be used how, by the system, how to launch an application component. So these are all about your intent uh, object inputs. Now let us see what are the different types of intents available for us. In Android, we have two types of intents. One is explicit intent, another one is implicit intent. Explicit intent is to specify the component it's to start by its name. So where we'll provide the target name as part of the name object we have seen. And this is typically used to start a component of the same application or own application. So to start a new activity is a response to the user action, start service to download a file in the background both are comes under this explicit intent you are explicitly content so contacting this next implicit intents if you do not name a specific component or a target then it is going to be an include implicit intents so declare a general action to perform which allows a component to perform another app to handle it so where the android system finds the best component to handle this intent Example, location-based app will load location data to the, our application. So where the implicit intent is taking a major part to receive the implicit intent amount. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Let's catch up in the next session.